Let me read to you a passage from the 28th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 16 to 20. It's the Gospel for the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord, which is the seventh Sunday in Eastertide. St. Matthew writes, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Then they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, to the very end of the age. That's from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. And what does it suggest to us? Well, you know, there is an old saying that familiarity breeds contempt. Of course, it is a caricature, but like many exaggerations, it contains a grain of truth. The truth contained in it is that there is a danger of failing to remember the true significance and value of something that we are constantly dealing with. A married couple, once deeply in love, begin to take one another for granted and gradually forget how blessed they are for the qualities each has in the other. A person has an exceptional opportunity in the work position he has been offered, but he takes it for granted. He fails to exert himself and not only misses many opportunities for his own advancement, but even in the course of time, perhaps loses the job. Well, something of this kind of failure is often present in the practice of religion, including the Christian religion. Take the celebration of the mysteries of the faith during the course of the, of the church's liturgical year. Every Sunday is the Lord's Day and is a celebration of Christ's resurrection. Very many Christians do not celebrate the Sunday. For many, it is just a day off from work, and if there is the chance to earn extra money with overtime on the Sunday, they take it. They are familiar with the elements of their faith, but they neglect them, ultimately to their own cost. The person who does practice his Christian faith participates in the church's celebration of the mysteries of Christ throughout the year. But the danger can be of it becoming largely a routine. Whereas the doing of something over and over again, year by year, offers a wonderful opportunity to live it and to relive it with a more and more profound appreciation. We ought to strive to do, th to do this constantly. Let us consider the Church's annual celebration of the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord and endeavour, as we should with each of the feasts of the Church's year, to give it real thought and appreciation. At His Ascension, the Lord Jesus takes His place at the right hand of the Father, where He now intercedes for us. It was the crown of His mission and His final triumph. St Paul writes that though from all eternity the glory of God was His, the Son of God put it all aside and became as we men are. Indeed, he became lowlier still, even to death on a cross. The pattern of Christ's life was one of following the path of obedience and abasement. He chose the lowly path, the path 
bereft of the glory that was due to him as God. And indeed, it was a path even lowlier than that which is typically ours. Christ suffered deprivation and poverty, humiliation and rejection. He chose to die a death that encompassed in itself all that was needed to make up for mankind's sins. We can only glimpse at the degree of suffering that this involved by taking account of the immeasurable ocean of sin that fills the world. How could we measure even the scale of one man's sins, let alone the sins of the world? But this was the mission of Christ, to take away the sin of the world by suffering and dying as the Lamb of God. The sins of the world were the measure of his abasement. Christ, the sinless one, went down to the very depths for our sake. But then, immersed in sin at its deepest abyss, and having made up for it all, he rose and was exalted at the highest level to the right hand of his heavenly Father. This man, whom his disciples knew so well, this man whom the crowds had followed and whom many had deserted, this man whom the leaders had utterly rejected and put to death, this man who had borne on his shoulders the sins of the entire world, this same man now ascended to the highest throne, and as man received the glory proper to himself as God. He shares equally with his Father the glory of God. He, our brother, now occupies his place at the right hand of the Father Almighty. He is equal to God in every way in the sense that he is God. And now as man, he enjoys the glory that was his before the world began. He has triumphed over the sin of the world and his weapon was the path of abasement and of obedience unto death. The reward was to enter the highest glory. On the Feast of the Ascension we celebrate that triumph. Jesus Christ is now seated at the right hand of the Father and as we heard in the Gospel he is the Lord with all authority in heaven and on earth. When we think of the ascension of Christ into heaven, we acknowledge all this. He is our Lord and our King. He is our High Priest, continually interceding with the Father on our behalf. And that constant prayer of His on our behalf is the sacrificial prayer He offered for us on the cross and which is made present at Mass. Our life's work is to obey everything he has commanded and to invite all others to recognize him as Lord, receiving baptism and living according to his word. Let us then resolve to make him the Lord of our life and to draw all others into union with him.